Today I'm going to show you my entire gear set, everything I use whenever I'm hunting in-state and anything that I use whenever I'm traveling out of state. So let's get to it. My name is Clint Campbell and I run the Truth From The Stand deer hunting podcast where we try to help make each other better bow hunters. Today I'm going to go over my entire gear list for what I use for in-state hunts and whenever I'm traveling uh, out of state. I just recently got back from a two-state trip um, and am unpacking all my gear and it's spread out everywhere so I thought this is the perfect time to kind of go through everything while it's a mess. So maybe this will help me organize it. So let's get started. So first things first, let's uh, take a look at the camo. So what I have here is basically just a Remington box that I bought. I think I got it online somewhere. I keep everything in it. It keeps it dry whenever I keep it in the back of my truck. It has a rubber gasket on the inside, so no dust and water and whatever. Uh, I guess it's scent free too. I don't really pay much attention to that much anymore. I just try to play the wind. So let's crack this thing open and see what's in here. All right, so this box initially just kind of holds my camo for the most part um, but it ends up kind of becoming a catch-all whenever I'm out on these travel hunts so the first thing that I take with me on these hunts are trail cameras um, this is an Exodus render cell camera couldn't use it in Missouri this year um, can't use trail cameras on a lot of the conservation ground out there so couldn't use that but most of the other states I travel to I can use cameras so I usually take a couple of these with me and then um, sometimes I'll take this, which is a cell or a, uh, a solar panel to power it. So I'm not running through batteries and not having to run to the store to get batteries. Um, for warm weather, uh, what I'm going to basically use is, you know, a lot of the gear that I might use whenever I'm doing an elk hunt. Uh, these are Sitka core lightweight uh, uh, base layers. So I'll use a set of these usually whenever the temps are going to be probably 60 and above. And these are the Sitka subalpine mountain pants. I don't really necessarily worry about all my camo matching necessarily. Um, it's more function than it is than at all matching per se and dealing with whatever the temperatures are going to be. So a lot of times I'll wear those core lightweight, uh, lightweight base layers with these when the temperature is going to be a little warmer. Um, they breathe pretty well. Um, and then I don't, you know, if I'm sweating and stuff like that, those, those uh, base layers are what kind of soaks it up. And then I can try to descent those with some type of uh, ozone or something like that just to, to keep the funk down off of them. Um, you know, typically for a rut trip, you know, I'm going to need some things that are a little, a little warmer. So the base layers I'm going to use for that are this, is this Sitka Core. I believe this is a medium weight. Um, and this is in their elevated pattern. Um, this actually is something that I wear almost every hunt, even when it's warm out, I'll use this as the main, as the main base layer, um, does a good job when it's warm. Um, when it's cold, it does a good job in terms of being, being the base layer to keep me warm. The other thing that I always wear, um, typically whenever the temps start to get into like maybe the, the fifties, low sixties, you know, sometimes it'll just be this, you know, uh, Sitka fanatic hoodie. Um, I'll wear this and sometimes this will be it. If it's going to be in like the mid sixties. Uh, that might be the only thing I wear, uh, but a lot of times what I'll hike in will be that this core, um, kind of like mid-weight Sitka base layer with this on the top, with this uh, Fanatic hoodie on the top of it, and that'll be what I'll wear to walk in, even whenever it's the temperatures are down in the 20s. Um, typically, that's what I'm walking in uh, wearing so I don't sweat. Uh, as far as the bottoms go, um, these are just core uh, mid-weight, I believe they're mid-weight again, um, it's the matching set to the base layer top that I have. Um, this is what I'll often wear. They're thin, um, do a good job of keeping me warm whenever it's down to like maybe, you know, in the, if it's gonna be in the 40s as the low, you know, I'll wear this with, you know, my, 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 my shell pants, um, which will be more than enough in that, in, that, in that temperature range. If it gets colder than that, this is kind of my secret weapon here, is these are not a hunting brand, these are called hot chilies and they're kind of like fleece material. Um, I ended up getting picking these up whenever I used to snowboard a lot. Um, I'd be out west snowboarding, super cold temperatures and it was always getting cold. Ended up finding these at a ski shop and they have wicking material or they're you know wicking which I guess means it's pulling the water away from my skin to try to keep me warm and once I started wearing these I never had a problem being cold while I was snowboarding so I figured I would just transition those right over to my hunting gear and this is what I'll wear whenever the temps dip down below you know 40 during the day as like a high or whatever so it's like anywhere from like teens to teens to 40s as a high this is what i'm wearing as a base layer as far as my my shells go whenever the temps start to dip i mean these pants are probably 
my favorite pair of hunting pants I've ever had. It's the Sitka Stratus pants. Um, super warm. They have a little bit of a liner, which is, which is nice. So whenever the temps, you know, if it's not below, you know, low sixties, these pants do get, do get warm. But even if I'm going to be a little bit warm, I'll oftentimes wear these. They're really thick. They're rugged. I break brush with them all the time. They've stood up. I've had them for several years. I've beaten, have beaten the crap out of these things and they just, they don't tear and they just, they last. So probably my favorite pair of hunting pants that I've ever had. I've had them, I think three full seasons. I think I've worn those. As far as a jacket goes, I have a couple different options that I'll wear for a jacket. I'll just go through one more layering thing. So this, a lot of times for my top, I'll wear that Fanatic hoodie with a base layer. And then the only other thing that I'll wear as far as insulation goes is this old um, army surplus store uh, military jacket liner. Um, it's kind of mimics that Prima Loft that a lot of folks are wearing. I have a Prima Loft jacket, but this is just something I bought for nine bucks at an army surplus store. And I will almost always have this in my pack with me in case it gets cold and I can throw this on. So this thing here is, you know, worth its weight in gold for me at least. Um, I like to try to keep things as, as thin and as slim as possible. And that allows me to do that because what I'm typically wearing as my outer shell on the top is a Sitka uh, Fanatic vest. Um, I can't remember the last time I actually wore a full jacket. Uh, while hunting. Usually the layering that I do with the, the, the stuff that I just showed you, if I, use all, if I use those layers with this Fanatic vest, I'm good to go. It has wind stopper in it. Um, it's super warm. You know, it does collect burrs because of the material on the outside. It has the kangaroo pouch on the front, which is really nice. You throw, you know, a, a hand warmer in there and I usually don't even need gloves um, with, with this. So that's like probably 90% of the time is what I'm going to wear. And I'll wear that vest with that with those insulation layers and, and layering systems i just showed you down to temps that are probably in the 20s you know or or, or low 30s um, as long as there's not a ton of wind the only time that i'll need to break out a jacket is if there's a ton of wind just because i won't have anything on my arms that's wind breaking and that's that'll be where i get cold so that is kind of the the layering system for the most part there's a few other pieces here that i do mix in um i'll show you here this is probably more earlier in the season my season opens in september um if i'm, ha if I'm traveling out of state these sometimes don't get busted out quite as often but this is the sitka stratus vest uh, this was new this year i wore it a couple times great vest especially in warmer temperatures super lightweight has uh wind stopping material in it material in it as well um, really like this vest a lot. And then as far as a jacket goes, you know, if I am going to wear a jacket, this is the Sitka Stratus jacket, which was new for this year as well. And uh, killer jacket, removable hood. Um, if I am going to need something over my arms and it's going to get kind of chilly out, this is what I'll, this is what I'll put on as opposed to a bigger bulkier jacket. Um, I do have some Fanatic, uh, I do have a Fanatic jacket and I will wear that from time to time, but even in late season, I'm usually not stepping outside the realm of the, of the pieces that I just showed you. So as far as um, the last couple pieces go here, you know, this is a Rancho Safari ghillie jacket. Um, I picked that up this year for a couple of the ground hunts that I was going to do. Um, just wanted to have this with me. You know, I used it a couple times this year. I uh, had a really good close encounter, just wasn't uh, able to get a shot opportunity. Um, great jacket. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was, but I'll put links to all this stuff in the, in the description so you guys can kind of check all this stuff out. Um, as far as optics and binos and stuff go, you know, I just, I use a regular bino harness, nothing crazy, nothing fancy, a Sitka one because I've had it for elk hunting. So I just use that to hunt whitetails as well. Has a little pouch here on the side where I keep my milkweed. As far as binos go, what I'm using here is a, is a pair of Mavens. Um, these are a pair of the custom mavens that are killer. As far as a uh, rangefinder goes, I'm just using the old standby I bought this years ago. I think I even bought it used on eBay. Just an old Bushnell saddle. So I had I did a saddle video kind of showing my entire setup and my climbing method and all that stuff. So I'll put links to those in here as well, so you can check those out if you want to just kind of go through my saddle gear. I'm not going to go through each individual piece here necessarily, but in the past I've used the the mantis saddle this year i'm using the phantom saddle a lot more adjustable a lot more adjustability uh, to it super comfortable i use you know ropeman ones i use their tethers their lyman's belt and i've got a few mods and stuff on this one that are very similar to what i did last year with the mantis 
All right, next we'll move on to what I'm putting on my feet. So these here, um, this is what I'm wearing probably 90% of the time. Um, well, probably more, more than that actually, like 100% of the time. I have two pair of these, so it just depends on if they get wet or not, if I swap them out. But uh, they're Solomons. Uh, they're just a, a lightweight hiking boot. It's something that I wore whenever I was elk hunting. I really liked them. There's a ton of different types of boots out there. Um, you know, uh, I would at some point, I think, like to get a set of Krispies. Um, but I've had these. They've worked well for me. And, I, you know, I don't really have any complaints with them. They're non-insulated. Um, so I don't really use anything with insulation. What I will use, I'll show you here in a little bit, are some Arctic Shields to put over the top of them if it gets really cold. Or a tip from uh, a buddy, uh, a fellow that I know, Byron Horton uh, from Whitetail Experience. Um, he gave a recommendation of taking an old wool sock, cutting off the end and putting it over your toes to keep your toes warm. And so I actually have a pair of old socks, old wool socks in my pack that I carry with me just for that reason. The other thing that I'll wear or that I take with me are some hip waders, um, you know, for water access and so forth. Um, so I'll use these, uh, especially around here where I live, you know, I, I kayak in to places relatively frequently now. Um, and so I'm using these pretty, pretty often, but I'll typically wear them in when I kayak in and then I'll take my hikers with me and then swap them before I walk into wherever I'm going to set up. That's usually my setup. I'll wear some kind of calf high or knee high rubbers. Uh, sometimes, um, those are typically some gum leaf USA boots. Um, you know, if I'm hunting some swamps around here or whatever, I know I'm going to get into some water, but I'm not going to be you know, getting into deep water or kayaking and I will wear those from time to time, but that's probably 95, 98% of the time what I'm wearing, those hikers and those, those hip waders. Let's jump into the pack here and see what all we have in here. Um, this is probably the world's smallest set of rattling antlers, but it's not the size of the rattling antlers. It's the motion in them. Um, I use these while I was in Iowa, Missouri, when I'm in Ohio, um, wherever. They worked, I've rattled in bucks with them. I've rattled in big bucks, I've rattled in small bucks. Um, they're just light, they're small. I don't want a big set of rattling antlers. Honestly, I, I don't ever really use these in Pennsylvania. Um, my feeling is I'm gonna scare more bucks off than I'm gonna bring in with these. So they typically only go with me whenever I'm going out of state and I want something small and light uh, that'll get the job done. I prefer regular real antlers to fake antlers. I just think they sound better, which is why I carry them with me. Um, the other thing that I'll carry here, in addition to using Onyx, is I'll use a Garmin InReach. Um, again, this is something I took with me when I was in Montana. Um, it's just a little extra safety, especially when I hunt a lot by myself. You know, if I travel out of state by myself, I don't have cell service, I can text with this, let my wife know when I'm in my tree, out of my tree, back to my truck, back in camp, or whatever the case is. And then it's got the oh so important SOS button here um, in case things get Western, you can get yourself out of trouble. So um, small data plan with this, cheap. I only run it during the course of hunting season. So I think it's like 15 bucks or 10 bucks a month or something like that to have the SOS. So I run it September, October, November, and then I usually cancel it after that, start it up the next year. I've done a video about my climbing sticks and how I climb uh, with my saddle gear. So you can check that video out, link in the description. But this is just a set of, uh, two lone wolf uh, sticks that I cut down to 17 inches. Those pack on the back of this predator pack. Um, the predator pack is great for carrying the predator. It's got these molly attachments. Uh, we can attach other stuff to it. I've run this pack before by itself, just it alone. Um, and it did a great job. Um, that holds my predator pack. And again, I have a video where I showed how I attach all this stuff, but I'm using just some um, a uh, paracord here to hold the predator pack in place. So predator pack being held in place with this paracord, um, it just flips up or I can take it off, whatever the case is. So inside, this is the tool bucket, if I'm not mistaken, by Sitka. Um, this is the new version from this year. I used the tool belt for a little while and then as temps started getting colder, I needed to take base layers in with me and stuff. Um, this became the pack that I ended up using. So in here, Essentially, you know, this flops down, which is nice. It makes it easy to kind of get inside of it. You know, as I'd mentioned, our buddy Byron talked about using wool socks. Um, here's the second set of, or the extra set of socks that I have that I carry with me to put over the tips of my toes to keep my feet warm. Um, one other base layer here. This is like the core heavyweight, I think, sit by Sitka. Um, great piece. Don't wear it too often. I'll wear it more scouting than I do anything, uh, but I do carry it with me in case I need an extra layer. Um, this is a double, a double whammy here. This is their, I think it's their Fanatic Neck Gator. Um, 
And I don't wear it that often unless it gets really cool. But what I found is if I take it and I'm in the tree and I have my tether tied in, right? And I'm in the saddle. If I pull this through a carabiner, I can flip it around the carabiner, put my forehead on it and, and fall asleep. I don't have to take an extra anything to, to use to try to keep my forehead from smashing up against my, my carabiner when I'm in my saddle. So that's really why I carry it with me in case I want to take a little nap. Uh, hat, I already mentioned this. This is the new um, Stratus beanie that they have this year with the ear holes in it. So you don't have to you know, constantly flip up your, your hat to be able to hear. It has some holes in it to allow your hearing to be enhanced whenever you're wearing wearing a beanie. So I use that. Um, this is just the, the, the pad that I take with me to wrap around the tree um, for whenever I sit versus lean, um, which this is just a field and stream uh, pad that I cut in half that you'd maybe use for turkey hunting. Um, some trash here. This is a snack bag, very important snack bag. Uh, grunt tube. This is made by Woodhaven. Um, I don't even know what than what it is it's the proflex stinger proflex grunt so sounds good it's one of the better sounding grunts that i've found um, i will say this though it is more challenging to get a loud grunt out of this thing than it is some of your maybe your generic or your more well-known uh, grunt tubes so keep that into consideration but overall i really like this this tube and then it wouldn't be a hunting pack or a rut pack if you didn't have the original the can the doe estrus bleep all right, so the next thing we're using here that we got out here is my bow. Um, this is new for me this year. So this is the Matthews uh, VXR28. I think that's what it is, VXR28. Yeah, VXR28. Um, HHA site, uh, single pin. It's done, done well for me. And then this is the integrated uh, Matthews or QAD uh, drop away arrest. Might be changing to a whisker biscuit this year. Uh, this coming season based on the recommendation of Brian Broderick from Day 6 Gear. We did a podcast about that and he talked about his alt optimum whitetail setup. You want to check that podcast out if you haven't listened to it yet. As far as uh, arrows go, I'm using Day 6 uh, 350 spine uh, arrows using some Day 6 um, Evo 100 grain broadheads. Um, and then these arrows, I believe it's a 50 grain insert outsert. And I want to say my total arrow weight is somewhere around like 470-ish, if, if memory serves. Um, that is the bow setup. Really like this setup. It's super, um, super accurate. Uh, shoots really nice. Super smooth, super smooth draw, no hand shock. Really, I used to shoot Matthews a, a while ago and then stopped and probably should have never stopped shooting Matthews. So um, really like the bow. My release is over here. Um, this is, I changed this, I think two years ago in shooting a Carter just because uh, thumb release. Uh, I typically shoot it back tension style, um, but can pop it off with the thumb if I need to get a shot off quick. Um, so that is the bow setup. Of course, I'm taking my trusty camper with me um, on, these tra on the travel hunts anyway. Um, I did a whole video series about me building this this year. Um, I basically took an old cargo trailer uh, that my grandpa, my grandpa had, um, and then gutted it and built out a DIY travel trailer. So if you want to check that out, I'll put the links in the description below so you can see how that build came to life. But the quick visual here is, if you can see, bed up top, some storage down below, cabinet counter, and a heater, and a window. So that is pretty much it. I cook using um propane and a uh jet boil is essentially how i get my get my nourishment in the evenings the only other thing that i haven't mentioned yet that i'll show you here really quick it didn't go with me on this out of state hunt but i use it pretty frequently in state or uh, at home the only reason it didn't go with me while i traveled was because a buddy of mine actually had a boat so this is a new canoe f10 uh canoes or a kayak setup sit on top kayak setup and so can't really see a whole lot of it here Let's see if we can pull it back and uh you know i paddle in to certain places other places you know i'm going to use a motor depending on how far i have to go this is a 35 pound thrust uh Minn Kota, um Minn Kota motor and then i use uh just an agm 12 volt agm 12 volt battery 
as the power supply for this thing, and it has done me pretty, uh, pretty well. We haven't pulled any bucks out with it yet, but hopefully that will be remedied here in the next few weeks. So thank you all for checking out the video. If you've not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button below, hit the like button, and tell your friends about it. Thanks for watching.